Hi everyone, welcome back to Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. This is another video about 23 books I want to read in 2023 and this time it's going to be my 23 crime, thriller and mysteries for 2023. <laughs> Welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. My name's Alice and I have way too many books and uh, in the interest of getting lots of those books read in 2023 I decided when I made my 23 classics for 2023 that the thing I have most of on my shelf is obviously crime, thrillers, mysteries and I wanted to make a video with 23 that I plan to read next year or hope to read next year. Obviously, caveat, I may not get through all of these 23, but I thought I would talk about what the options are. I haven't put all 23 as being from my giant bookshelf. And that is because, firstly of all, there are two authors and books that I know I will definitely want to read when their new book comes out this year so I'll talk about them in a bit and secondly as you would have seen from previous videos I've been working my way through the Penguin's top 60 thrillers of all time this is a project that was actually the brainchild of AJ Dunn Reads and Writes and AJ runs the Killer Reads Thriller Month book club where we read one of these 60 books each month so so far in theory I've read 12 in practice I've actually read 10 so far so I've still got a couple to catch up on and I made the decision when I started on this project that I want to read all of the 60 but I won't necessarily reread the ones that I had already read unless I really have an urgent desire to do so so there are seven books out of the 12 that I have not read for 2023 so I thought I would talk about those seven first because those are books that even though I don't own them I will definitely be participating in that. Without any further ado let's talk about the potential 23 crime and thrillers for 2023. Let's start with Killer Reads Thriller Month. I can't remember exactly which months these are all in but the books that I intend to read from this are Tinker Tailor Soldier Spy by John Le Carre. I think we actually have this on our bookshelf belonging to my husband so I should be able to read that without buying it or anything. I believe that's February's choice and then moving on into the rest of the year I really would like to read the book In the Woods by Tana French. This is not an author that I've tried before but I have heard good things about their writing. I'm really excited for this book. It's one of the ones I most want to read. Another book that is on the Killer Reads list is The Expendable Man by Dorothy B. Hughes. I don't know anything about this book but I'm sure when we come to it I will be able to tell you more. The Martian by Andy Weir is another one on the list that I'm very excited for. I read Project Hail Mary this year and I loved it and I do already have the audiobook downloaded for The Martian which I think is probably mid-year or later this year. Night of the Hunter by David Grubb is another one that again I know nothing about but when I get to it I will tell you more about it. Later on in the year I also plan to read with the Thriller Month book club A Rage in Harlem by Chester Himes. This is a book I have heard of before and I believe I had it on a list of books I wanted to read from a, a guide to crime fiction that I read and I've already downloaded the audiobook of this one as well so that's two of them that I already own on audio. And the final one I will read for the year is Fatal by Jean-Patrick Manchette. Don't know anything about that one either. So those are the seven that are not on my giant bookshelf already. And now I have two that I will definitely be reading in some shape or form when they come out in 2023. The two books that I plan to read when they come out are the final book in the Ruth Galloway series by Ellie Griffiths. That's one I'm really really excited for because I've read the entire series up to now. I can't actually remember when this one's coming out but I'll put it up on the screen. And so that will be one I will definitely listen to straight away because I've listened to all of those as audiobooks and I'm very very excited for that one. And the second one I'm really excited for is The Favour by Nikki French. I believe this is coming out in March and if you've seen my recent video I recently met the couple behind Nikki French. Uh, the husband and wife writing team that consists of Nikki Gerard and Sean French 
and I just absolutely can't wait for their next book. I know, again, very little about it, but I like to go into Nikki French books not knowing that much. So come March, this will be a book I'm very, very excited for. So the rest of the books I plan to read from the Giant Bookshelf. We have 14 books from the Giant Bookshelf, and I probably could have picked double this because there are so many crime books on my shelves. So firstly, let's talk about the series is that I want to continue. And there are four of those that I have been reading and I definitely want to read the next book. I may read more than one book from these series, but I am definitely hoping to read one from each. First of all, this will come as no surprise, we have the Jack Reacher book that I'm up to in the Jack Reacher series. I believe I have three more books on my bookshelf that belong to the Jack Reacher series. This one, The Sentinel and Better Off Dead. As well as those, there is a new one out, I believe, but I probably won't be buying that right away because I have three to go before that. So Blue Moon is, I believe, the last book that Lee Child has written on his own um, without his brother, who is join, joining him to write some Jack Reacher books and then the series is being passed on to him which is Andrew Child. I intend to read Blue Moon very very early on in the year. Next up we have the Rebus series by Ian Rankin. I believe I'm up to this one in A House of Lies and I'm looking forward to this latest instalment in the Rebus series. I've enjoyed Ian Rankin's books for nearly 20 years now. The Rebus books are just an absolute favourite so I'm looking forward to another John Rebus thriller next year. If you've seen my giant TBR video you will know that I also have a lot of books by Patricia Cornwall in the Scarpetta series. This is a series that I'm starting to feel a little bit like maybe I won't continue it forever. There are a lot of books in this series. The one I'm up to is Blowfly and this is highly rated as a very good one of the Scarpetta series. So possibly this will decide me on whether I carry on the series. But I do have, I think maybe about five more after this one. So hopefully I still like this series, but this is one that I will definitely try and get to in 2023. And the final author whose series I am continuing next year is Karen Slaughter. This is from Karen Slaughter's Will Trent series, but at some point along the way, the Will Trent series did collide with the Grant County series, which is my absolute favorite series by Karen Slaughter. And I believe this is one that combines some characters from the Grant County series with the characters from the Will Trent series. So I'm looking forward to Unseen. I've been meaning to read this one for ages. So I hope to definitely get to this one next year. From the Giant TBR generally, we also have lots more to talk about, so let's get straight on with it. The first um, book to mention is Birdman by Mo Hader. I actually started this in a try chapter this year and I didn't ever get around to reading the rest of it. I think I like Mo Hader. I have read a book of hers before and they are very gory, extremely brutal, but um, this one's the start of a series with D.I. Jack Caffrey in it and I look forward to finding out whether I like this series. A new book that I have recently added to the TBR and not talked about yet is The Red House Mystery by A.A. A. Milne. This is a very famous murder mystery story but I've never read it and I didn't really know that A.A. A. Milne had written books that were crime. I believe this was his only mystery. He's much more famous for writing the Winnie the Pooh and Christopher Robin series and of course lots of poems and things like um, Now We Are Six. I really look forward to seeing what his crime writing is like and I bought this on a recent trip to London from Hatchards and I couldn't resist it because it's a special edition in their like Hatchards special edition series. Uh, it's the eighth volume in the Hatchards library. It has a special number in the front to say which of the 2000 books that are produced in this edition it is. It has these gorgeous end papers and this lovely uh, dust jacket. So yeah, really, really pleased with that. 
couldn't really help adding that to the giant bookshelf. Oops. And I'll probably show this again in a haul video, but this is one I definitely would like to get to in 2023. Next up, we have Harlan Coben. And I say the author rather than the book because I have several books by Harlan Coben on my shelf and I will probably just choose based on what I feel like reading at the time. The one I've picked to hold up is Livewire. I can't actually remember if I've read this book, but I don't think I have. This is one in the Myron Volitar series. And I really have enjoyed that series, but I haven't read all of them yet. Uh, I have got some standalone ones on my shelf, and I also think I've got some with a character called Mickey Bolitar, who I think is Myron's nephew, perhaps. So I'm looking forward to reading some more Harlan Coben next year, for sure. Next up, we have Killer Come Back to Me by Ray Bradbury. I believe this is short stories, and I think these are all the short stories that Ray Bradbury wrote that are crime stories. I'm not sure if it, that is exactly all of them, but I didn't know until earlier this year that Ray Bradbury had written some crime. He's usually more famous for sort of sci-fi elements to his short stories, but I've absolutely loved everything I've read from Ray Bradbury so far, so I'm really looking forward to A Killer Come Back to Me. The next one is another author I've read a lot of books by, and that is Tessica Ritson, and this I think is the last book of hers that I have on my shelf that I haven't read, and it's called Blood Stream. I'm not sure that this is actually a crime one because Tessica Ritson is obviously quite famous for her Rizzoli and Isles series which is about a detective and Isles is like a medical examiner and I love that series but I think this is one of her standalones and more of a thriller. So I think I have started this book a couple of times before so I look forward to finally getting to it and hopefully finishing it. Next we have The Neon Rain by James Lee Burke. This has been on my bookshelf for over 10 years and I've read another book by James Lee Burke, although this one is the first in his series. And his detective, I believe it's called Dave Robichaux. I think these are set in New Orleans and I'm looking forward to reading The Neon Rain because it has a quite good reputation for a crime book. Interested to get to it. We also have The Bone Collector by Jeffrey Deaver. I finally got to my first Jeffrey Deaver book this year. I wouldn't say it was an absolute favourite, it was fine. But this one is one of his most famous ones in, that introduces Lincoln Rhyme. It says he's one of the world's foremost forensic criminalists, but he's also quadriplegic and planning suicide. There's a famous film uh, about this book and I'm just interested to read it and find out if it lives up to the hype. Uh, then we have a fairly new crime book. I actually won this in a giveaway on Twitter just before I started on booktube and this is called Flesh and Blood by Caroline Mitchell. I think Caroline Mitchell's main character is called D.I. Amy Winter and I haven't read any of the books featuring Amy Winter yet so I'm really looking forward to getting around to this one and seeing if Caroline Mitchell is going to be a new author I really, really like. Also, I do have another Nikki French on the list, or I've left a space for another Nikki French, and it will either be, it will be one of these two that I have as physical books, because I only have four Nikki French books left to read before their new one comes out. And the two I have in paperback are Losing You and What to Do When Someone Dies. And I think that both of these will be great choices, but I haven't decided between them yet. So I do hope to get to another Nikki French as well as The Favour in 2023. I'm getting near the end of the pile. I also have The Last Detective by Robert Craze. This is another book that I bought after seeing it in the Rough Guide to Crime Fiction. And it was on the list that I made books I wanted to read from that. I think Robert Craze's detective is called Elvis Cole and I think he's a private investigator. That's another one that I look forward to trying this series. I think this is book number nine in a series but I don't think you have to read them in order. We will see. The last one is The Mike Hammer Omnibus Volume 1 by Mickey Spillane. I haven't read any Mickey Spillane books. These are sort of pulp fiction I believe and pulp fiction really does intersect with crime fiction. This is definitely another one that I found out about in the Rough Guide to Crime Fiction and I've wanted to read for over 10 years. Mickey Spillane wrote these Mike Hammer series and this one has three books in it so I will definitely try and get to at least one of these books. It features either Jury, 
my gun is quick and vengeance is mine so i'm looking forward to trying a bit of pulp fiction this year as well there's two more things i want to mention although that is now 23 books the first is that i am also going to be reading the aurora tea garden mysteries this year these are by charlene harris and this is for a read-along that i'm really looking forward to called into the library and this is a, a read-along that is hosted by Ange from Ange's book chatter and amy from booktube with amy and i'll leave both of their channels down below so you can go and check out the announcement for this i have actually read all all of the stories in Omnibus 1 before but I am going to be rereading them because I remember almost nothing about them. These are quite short and I'm looking forward to reading these. So those are some mysteries I definitely will get to in 2023 but I couldn't fit them on my list of 23 or it would have taken up too much room. And I want to give one more author a mention and that is Dick Francis. I own at least 20 books by Dick Francis that I haven't read yet. So I really do need to try and read some of them this year. So I do hope to get to him as well. So that was the 23 crime and thriller books that I hope to read from my bookshelf predominantly in 2023. Do let me know in the comments down below. Have you read any of these books and loved them? Are there any you think I should prioritise? It'll be interesting to look back at the end of the year and see if I read the 23 and if not, how many did I read? If you have enjoyed this video, please do give it a like. Please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. Are there any crime and thriller books that you are reading in 2023? Let me know in the comments down below. Chat to me all things crime and thrillers in the comments. I'd love to hear from you and I hope very much to see you all again soon in another video all about books here on Alice and the Giant Bookshelf. Bye for now!